Welcome to the Texas Today Show. Today we are privileged to have famous Texan Thomas Clark on the show. How are you today, Mr. Clark? Doing well. Okay, when and where were you, Thomas Campbell Clark, born? Well, I was born here in Dallas, Texas on September 23rd, 1899. What were the various jobs that you have had throughout your life? Well, okay, I served in the federal government for 30 years doing different jobs. In the Department of Justice as the U.S. Attorney General, and I was also the first Texan in the U.S. Supreme Court to serve. Who did you marry? Well, <laughs> funny story. I got married to the Supreme Court Justice's daughter, Mary Ramsey. <laughs> okay, next question. <laughs> How were you an inf influential leader? Well, I'd like to say that I really made a difference in the Texas government as I spoke up for the Texas people. What were your greatest contributions in Texas history? I was involved in several civil liberties cases, as well as serving in the Department of Justice and the, the Attorney General position, and in the Supreme Court. So. Okay, thank you for all your answers. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. It's great. Welcome to the Texas Today Show. Today we have we are privileged to have famous Texan Chester Nimitz on our show today. Mr. Nimitz, how are you doing today? I'm doing just great. Loving this fall weather. All right, that's good. Um, I just have a couple questions to ask you today. Sounds good. Okay. Um, just wanted to ask you, where were you born? Well, I was born in Fredericksburg, Texas, but my family is German. Okay, okay, that's interesting. What was your ethnicity? German. Okay, um, what did you develop a prototype for? In 1926, I developed a prototype for Naval Reserve Officer Camp Training Corps at the UC... At the University of California in Berkeley. Wow, that's a pretty big accomplishment. Yes, sir. What did... Sorry. Um, what was your involvement with the Navy? I was the leading U.S. Navy authority on submarines, as well as chief of the Navy's Bureau of Navigation in 1939. I was the United States' last surviving fleet admiral, admiral, and I was also involved in World War II. Wow. Yes, it was actually under my flagship, the USS Missouri, that Japanese surrendered on the 2nd of September in 1945. Great. Mm-hmm. What, what um, just the last question for you, what are some of your greatest contributions to the Texas history of today? Well, as you see, I was heavily involved in World War II and the submarine action. So my contributions to Texas today would have to be the fact that I served in the Navy. It was under my flagship that the Japanese surrendered. And I also ordered the ambush that killed the Japanese counterpart admirable. Isoroko Yamamoto in World, <laughs> World War II. <laughs> well, that's quite a name. Well, thank you for coming on our show today, Mr. Nimitz. It's great to be able to talk to you. Yes, sir. I'll see you later. All right. Have a good one. Hello. Welcome to the Texas Today Show. Today we are interviewing Richard King, and we're just so honored to have him today. Yes. How are you today, Mr. King? Very good. Well, that's great to hear. Well, I just have a few questions for you, and then we'll be done with this. When and where were you born? 
I was born on July 10, 1824 in New York City. I was reared in Orange County, New York until I was nine years old. When did you move to Texas and why? I moved to Texas because of business reasons later in life. Oh, I see. Well, I heard that you had many jobs before you found what you were really wanting to do. Could you tell me about your childhood and your quest to find yourself in relation to your life and occupation? At age nine, I was taken in as an apprentice by a Manhattan jeweler. I broke the apprenticeship in 1835 and jumped on board a ship called the Demona as a stowaway. Captains Hugh Monroe and Joe Holland schooled me in the art of navigation. I pursued steamboating between the years 1835 and 1841, and by age 16, I became a pilot. In 1842, I decided to enlist in the war, where I met my lifelong friend, Mifflin Kennedy. Wow, that's amazing. Could you tell me about your early apprenticeship and how it shaped you into the man that you are today? Well, when I was nine years old, I was an apprentice for only a short amount of time. Once I decided to head for Mobile, Alabama on the Desdemona, the two captains on the ship took me as their captain cub. They taught me what I needed to know about navigation, which helped me pursue steamboating and become a pilot at age 16. Wow. What war, war were you involved in? And did, it, did you meet anyone influential to you personally? I enlisted in the Seminole War in Florida, where I met my lifelong friend and later my business partner, Mifflin Kennedy. Together we also fought in the Mexican War. Wow. How much land have you bought all together? I have invested in approximately 682,500 acres of land. That's, that's amazing. Okay, Mr. King, what would you consider to be your greatest contribution to Texas history? Well, with the help of my friend Mifflin Kennedy, I revolutionized the economics of the South Texas ranching with the introduction of fencing, cattle drives to northern markets, large-scale cattle, sheep, mule, and horse raising, and the scientific breeding of livestock. We also built two of the most famous ranches in the American West. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you for coming on our show today, Mr. King. Goodbye. Thank you for watching the Texas Today Show. We just wanted to give you a sneak peek on who these puppets were. My name is Rochelle Lupke, and this is my puppet, Thomas Campbell Clark. And I'm Zoe Rockovich, and this is my puppet, Chester Nimitz. <laughs> Caitlin Pitchford, and this is my puppet, Richard King.